Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about Big Show, Battleground, and the best of the best of the best. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 390, 10 away from the Big Four. Oh, oh, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show coming at you from Pittsburgh, PA, and Mayhem Studios. I am Sorgatron, and with me is my faithful hetero life mate, uh, DJ Lunchbox, Papa Lunchbox. How you doing? What's up, guys? I am good. It is Papa Lunchbox, ass end of Pittsburgh, and I'm ready to beat your ears to death. With an audio dildo. That's right. And uh, just back in uh, San Antonio, Texas, killing bears with his peen. It's Amen. You look winded, sir. I'm black. I blacked out. I may have killed a bear. <laughs> we're really, we're almost at 400 shows. That's something. Hi right. right, guys. All right, and also joining us from the Bronx, New York, where the bears have gats. It's Mad Mike. Hey guys, I am the champion of podcasting. There he is. Awesome. <laughs> this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show where we are uh, fans who love wrestling and we like to talk about such things, a country spanning uh, round table as we usually have here uh, tonight. Of course, us here in Pittsburgh, PA, I think I said that already. Uh, but no, you can drop us a line. We are over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube, video and audio versions. If you like, have a comment, anything from, th- from tonight's show or anything else you want to bring up, drop us that line too. Good, 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 good times. times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Uh, or, of course, the Twitter right there in the corner of your screen if you're on the video, at Mayhem Show. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. Please look for that Facebook group, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show is called there. Uh, that's where a lot of our conversation is happening. Of course, Twitter, of course, uh, during Raws and Impacts and everything like that. Uh, again, some good conversation going there. Uh, and keeps you updated on everything going on in the show. We'll let you know some other ways to interact here later on in this broadcast podcast. Um, and so let's get right into it. The only way we know how with the fan mails uh, up first... We got an email from our good buddy Dustin, the great questions, and this one's going to be read by. Uh. <laughs> that's that's not an answer, LB. I think. <laughs> what the hell? So you can have here, May Hemians. You know, there were no third sheets, no speculation as to which stories are authentic in which are just typically sensationalized reports of a bunch of smarks who copy and paste news stories, their own little twist added. Without the behind-the-scenes reports on the net, I wouldn't have to know that Hogan is... Then I could live in my ignorant bliss while thinking he was gone for... Questions! Number one, what does it say about us in the wrestling fan culture when we chant for a heel group who is based around racist ideology? Who cares? That giant swing deserves to be cheered. What does it say about us, Sorg? It says that Pittsburgh. It says a lot about Pittsburgh after last night, doesn't it? Because uh, that was pretty. Did that come off as loud as I think it did? Yeah. Uh, I, I. It's. It's all about. I don't think it's necessarily just one city. Uh, yeah. yeah, people like to chant We the People, and I get cheering for Cesaro because of the big swing, because holy shit, Cesaro is amazing, yeah. but yeah, uh, I won't drop any names. I was at an independent wrestling show uh, recently where they were starting the national anthem, and before uh, the music kicked in, someone did the We the People chant, because they thought they were being funny. So it's a thing that's happening, and I don't know if people necessarily understand why they're doing it. So. I don't know if it's this. Is, I don't know if the real Americans is necessarily based off of racist ideology. It's more like jingoistic. Define the, the, the jingoistic. Uh, it's those. more. It's more like American. Like not necessarily against foreign people. It's about like drumming up 
classic American ideals. Yeah. Because, like, sometimes it depends on where they are. Like, if they're close to a border, obviously they're going to play up the racism bit. They're going to play up whatever will appear to get the most heat. Yeah. Like, if they're in middle America or if they're, like, in, like, an urban town, they're going to talk about people mooching off the government. That's not racism. That's just, I mean, that's just, you know, kind of bad-mouthing people who they feel are below them. So I don't know if it's necessarily... It's still sort of steeped in racism, though, because even like at the, I don't know, one of the small things from the Pittsburgh show, Zeb, I didn't think cut a promo, maybe a small one, I don't remember. But even like he did like the whole like fingers, like they're walking across the border thing, like at ringside. And it's, so I think it's steeped in that. I just don't think people necessarily well, it is a little realize bit, that. A little bit, it is a little bit less than he <laughs> All I'm right. sorry. Did you? I was stretching. I was just stretching my jaw. Did you go to me? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was an accident. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, well, you know, of course, he's, he's fighting. They're fighting Kali and Santino and wherever the hell Hornswoggle's from. Um, so, so there's that. I, I, and I mean, I think, and I think it's Tiny Town. Tiny Town. It's from Tiny Town. That's oh, these are under the ring, not from Come USA. Um, but obviously, they're, they're they're lampooning the the whole uh, Tea Party idea, right? With this. I'm- And plus, it doesn't matter if you're a heel or a face. If you have a promo before every one of your matches that leaves room for the audience to participate at the end, they're going to say, we the people, no matter what. Just like when The Rock was a heel, they said they sang along with The Rock. When The Miz was heel, everyone said awesome. And, like, and and we're people at this, people like the accuse, and they like to you know if there's an opportunity for someone to say a catchphrase, that's what they do. It doesn't matter if their heels or faces. That's just what that crowd does. Yeah, and, and, I think that's I think that's more where it lies. And, yeah, and and I think there's an appreciation. Again, I saw as many people cheering for Triple H and Randy Orton when they won or came out or anything like that. I, hell, they started cheering when Triple H said he was going to come out to the ring last night, like really loud. Um, I mean, people, we're beyond the good the good versus bad, and most of your crowd, half of your crowd, half of it's kids, but half of it are people that just appreciate wrestling and appreciate Triple H, whether he's being an asshole or not, right? Well, because- they also appreciate the fact that they're actually going to see him in person as opposed to just seeing him on a backstage. Exactly, but I mean, there were a lot of cheers when Randy Orton beat the crap out of Kofi. You know? Who well, was Kofi? That is true, but it's because a, it's Randy Orton. I mean, not to mention the lady in front of me who says, "Oh, Randy Orton had my babies." Um, but I well, mean, yeah, because Randy Orton's still a thing. <laughs> Randy yeah. Orton's still a thing, so of course people are going to cheer for him. You know, yeah, especially women. Happen. You know, yeah. I mean, he's it, it, it's, it's definitely like we're, and so so I think we're. I'm hoping, and I know it's a little bit of a gray area because like our we don't know the intentions of half the people chanting the "We the People." Uh, because, you know, I think we, you know, much like we enjoy being told how much we're dirt from CM Punk when he was a heel last year, uh, I think we enjoy hearing, you know, Zeb, you know, be be the caricature that we see on cable news. You know? Also, it could just be cheers for Cesaro. I guarantee at least a quarter of those We the People chants that helps. Are, are internet guys who love Cesaro and want to make sure that he gets a reaction. But not just that, he, uh, not just internet guys, which yeah, maybe, but like actual people that see, holy shit, Cesaro's fucking amazing, he yeah. can swing fucking anyone, and he's super, super I strong. Mean, this guy's been picking up Rose Clay and that finisher of his uh, for months. Alright, let's go to question mm-hmm. two here. Question number two. So, the rumors on the dirt sheets pit Derek Bateman as the new Ethan character. Is this a good pickup for TNA or just another case of them taking WWE scraps? Well, it Mike's is. got his visual opinion going on right there. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm sorry. sorry that they signed Derek Bateman, one of the guys that can actually talk like a well, human well, well, let's go to Eamon first on this one. I mean, you're a Derek Bateman uh, uh, supporter for the longest time. I like Derek time. Bateman. Yeah, and what do you think about the, his move to TNA? That's cool. I think he's entertaining. I think he's going to probably outshine most because I think he's the only one that I – like, out of the people you could grab and out of the people they have on TNA's roster – as far as like speaking ability, Derek Bateman has it compared to a lot of guys in TNA. Yeah, I think it's going to be phenomenal. It, it's a good move for Derek Bateman. 
Don't get me wrong about that. If you can find your way onto a televised program where you actually get billed, it's a good move for him. However, I think TNA will ruin him. Maybe. Because, because TNA- just that one promo that they showed last week, he seems like The Miz. And like all the bad parts of The Miz that we don't like anymore. I don't know. That, if that's what he's going to be, then it's a failure already. I don't think so. I think he's entertaining. I, I, again, <laughs> Happy's got a job. Good for him. Uh, do I expect great, great things out of this? No, not really. I really hope it's one of those things where uh, he's a guy that can take the ball and run with it. I feel like he tried his damnedest on WWE. When he, even when he wasn't on TV, we had a tout man, yeah. American guy we're hearing about in the chat room from Leg Kick. I mean, he made something that some of us followed, and it was entertaining. He tried really, really hard. Right to do mm-hmm. a Zack Ryder on this thing, and I think given something in TNA, I, I think he's the kind of guy that will go with it, you know. And, and yeah. I hope it works for him. I, I mean, I hope, I hope him the best with that, and I'm glad he's got a job, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I think it's great that he has a job, but uh, and I'm not saying this to be shitty or to upset Eamon or anything like that, but most people don't know who Derek Bateman is. Yeah, that's no. fine. Yeah, no, that's true. True. So it's not really a matter of WWE scraps. It's just they picked up this wrestler. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's not you a can't matter really of really be scraps if you weren't on the main course to begin with. And then again, exactly. like him... And, and the fact that he wasn't on the main roster and that, you know, he was in, like, one squash match on SmackDown or whatever, mm-hmm. like, he never got the chance to sort of show people his character. And while I love NXT, not a lot of people know about NXT, and even no, I know no. that. But all that time so, in NXT is a great portfolio for him to say, hey, TNA, look what I'm doing. And maybe somebody saw that, and that's how he got this. So and TNA that, has such a light roster and so many openings that now he could have a platform to do those awesome things. Exactly. Or he could be stuck in the Robbie E. All right. One more. Uh, <laughs> like Robbie from e. We're like still Robbie on the e. first email, guys. Easy. <laughs> easy. I have to you could give one per. Hmm? <laughs> 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 if you could give one person on the WWE roster a complete new look or gimmick. Who would you choose? Personally, I pick The Miz, because as he currently is, I can't help but change the channel when he... Um, You know, uh, last night I was sitting there in my seat kind of uh, wondering what Sandow would look like without a beard. Um, Uh, They've had it. It's Idol Stevens. (laughs) I'll have to look that up. But I mean, that's... (laughs) You know. Oh, that's that's my thought. What about you, Eamon? Oh, God, I don't know. I agree with the Miz. Miz needs I, something. I would repackage Kofi. Kofi? Kofi, yeah. Kofi, like, I, when I saw Battleground, I was, like, because I read this on Brandon's um, blog, I think. Mm. Yeah, I'm, at least I'm citing <laughs> it. Um, no, but he, he said that since the Wyatts took Kane away, they should be taking more people away. Kofi Kingston is a perfect person that they could take away. And I think I read this in someone to. else's blog that he could come back as the new Papa Shango. And that would be the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> that would be amazing. How about you, LB? Um, I would like to see Antonio Cesaro completely repackaged. Let him keep his move set. Let him let him still be very dominant. Um, but you know, get him away from the we the people thing. That I don't think I don't feel like that was a very well formed thought. You know what I mean? It's just like oh, I'm wrestling with these people now. You know, give him something mm-hmm. solid. And if not him, Wade Barrett. Fucking give Wade Barrett a gimmick and run. Just stick with it for like a year. Just let him run with it. Yeah. Let anybody, let anything happen instead of being like, oh, it's three or four matches and he's gone again. LB, have you watched the JBL and Cole show? (laughs) No. Um, On there, Wade Barrett has a gimmick that is phenomenal and would work on TV. It's called Bad News Barrett. I'm glad to hear it. Bad News Barrett. It's the greatest thing ever. Like he just comes in, delivers bad news to people, and then there's a there's like a hashtag that pops up on the screen, like it's the fucking sixties that says "Bad News Barrett." Need to it's watch the this show. Thing. I really need to watch this show. I, I it's like wow. everywhere. All right, uh, finish that off, LB. 
That's all for me, guys. You guys have been on a solid roll the past few weeks, so keep up yeah. the great job. Regards, Dustin, sent via the Samsung Galaxy S4, an AT&T 4G LTE smartphone. There to say that. So he gets the Wrestling Mayhem show very fast. Um, next one from Matt. My fellow Mayhem Americans, despite my best efforts to sell my tickets, I ended up attending Raw in Pittsburgh anyway. This was not a bad thing. Thought I'd share a few thoughts. I think the only person entertained by lost... I think I'm the only one entertained by lost Matadoras. No, I am highly entertained. And the, yep, they're the lady ship. that attended with me did not know about the midget bull. Uh, and was also <laughs> quite entertained to the point of giggling. Uh, when uh, That was me, not the email. Uh, when they announced Cena for Hell in a Cell, I thought it was a joke until they showed the graphic on the Titan Tron. Yeah, it was so... Weird. We were talking about that in the hangout too. Oh, I thought so that weird. Vicky was saying it as a joke so Ricardo could get the quick win. Yeah, I thought I was waiting for the just kidding, right? And then it yeah. didn't happen. Then we got a graphic. Um, and this, and Cena tweeted right after that too. As we mentioned this last one, Pittsburgh loves the real Americans. Pittsburgh also loves Randy Orton, but I think that's true in other cities too. Our fans can be cool when we want to be. Uh, there's nothing more terrifying than an adorable child wandering a dimly lit hallway wearing a Wyatt family sheep mask. I saw a little girl in a dress, could not, could not have been older than six, and she now haunts my dreams. Wow. <laughs> Um, I think a newer arena like that, they'd have better lighting. Uh, I think the setup for Miz TV took too long. I watched the stagehand dive under the ring as Miz was making his entrance. No, it was not one of Bray's two big stiffs. Um, yeah, it, it was a lot of setup for such a little thing last night, but okay. Um... This was my first Raw since the uh, Christmas Death March last year. Remember, they did SmackDown and the Christmas Eve edition of Raw. Holy and they crap. killed Santa. And they killed Santa. Uh, a much more pleasant experience, except I did not see Chachi in the men's room. Too bad. Aww. Right, what? I had a religious experience in that men's room. Question! Who would you like to see as a surprise <laughs> entrance to... Uh, uh, when Pittsburgh hosts the Royal Rumble, other than Kurt Angle, your mainstream media pal, Matt Carlins. Um, Bruno San Martino! <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah! Uh, I don't know. Shane Douglas, you're in Pittsburgh. No, that won't happen. <laughs> no, that won't happen never did. Who else is from Pittsburgh? Uh, well, no, Doink's dead. Um, Aww. Neil, Neil Walker. Neil Walker. Neil Walker? There you He's go. From Pittsburgh. There you go. Uh, how about Gino? While we're at it. Uh, <laughs> well, he's going to be busy, Sword. That's in January. Oh, it could be. Does it, does it have to be someone from Pittsburgh? I don't know. I'm just riding that train. <laughs> no, no uh, if, it's not, if it's not from Pittsburgh. Ain't no getting off of this train we on, Sword. Mm -hmm. Ain't no just throw Bob Backlund in there. He's from America. Oh, yeah, God, Bob, Bob Backlund. I don't know. Who would you like to see? Cena's already back. They announced like on the commercial... Yeah, I don't think that, they, I, obviously this is for the arena. They said, you know, John Cena, obviously not a surprise by then, and then not a surprise when they announced him later in their show for their match this month. Um, so. Ultimo Dragon. There you go. Because <laughs> he'll be happy about that and nobody else. Sorry. Uh, he'll trip on his way to Gee, the who could, I, I can't think about who would come back at this point. It would be amazing. Scott Hall gets better by then. And and he's no. good to go in or or Jake, Jake Roberts, yeah. I mean, Jake, Jake Roberts. Roberts. Jake's on the wagon. Yes. Jake Jake's looking great as of like six months ago, uh, and still doing so according to uh, you know what we're seeing on DDP's blogs and stuff. Is he good enough? He can make an appearance. You know what I mean? He doesn't need to do much, right? I think people will go batshit for that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would shit if Jake the Snake Roberts showed up. All you have to do is DDT Randy Orton once. There you go. The Amen? snake DDT is the viper. Amen? Perfect. What do you think? Oh, to come to Pittsburgh? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, not you coming to Pittsburgh. For the, no, no, for the Royal Rumble, you don't. Who do you think is oh, a surprise but... person for the Royal Rumble? Are you oh, okay? okay? Are you awake? He's busy What's thinking wrong about the with you? Kill. I kill the bear. Maybe the dead bear can be in the Royal Rumble. Did you know. drink? Did you drink Wrestle Fan? Did you drink bourbon for the first time? Did you get a little carried away? <laughs> I have no idea. Did you wake up 
butthole bleeding and covered in Vaseline. Your eyes look we'll so glassy. Um, I am no, shocked or, I can notice that over a webcam. So from the <laughs> chat room, <laughs> yes. uh, while, while Eamon thinks and thinks about the question, from the chat room, we have Heinz Ward from Jessica. He can shoulder block someone out of the rumble. Um, Riz wants to see El Torito or Karma. Uh, Jessica also wants to see Michael Tarver, because who doesn't? And Bobby F. J. Ken wants to see Ken Shamrock. Colin Delaney, let's do it. Yeah, that's my pick. Colin Delaney, really? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Colin's doing good. He's in good shape. Sure. <laughs> okay. How about one of the hard throws while we're at it? No. Romeo no. Roselli. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the one of the hard throws is coming to IWC in two weeks or next week. It's probably Romeo. Right? There, I can't remember which one. Uh, no, it's, it's the other one. It's the other one. <laughs> the one it's that's not Romeo. Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> now they're doing the special thing. But we'll get into that later. Um, where are we at? Yeah. Email answer. Is that the end of Max the email? Moon. Hell yeah, Max Moon. La Parca. Max Moon. Of All those guys. Speech. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Uh, next email from Eamon. Hi. Not from me. <laughs> Eamon, why did you email are you gonna say? Are you going to say this in a lady voice? I don't know. It's very intellectual, and I haven't pre-read this, so this should be fun. Um, okay, so the title of the email... Is what the fuck is, is the wrong cat? with you? Be an adult. Read the big words like a grown-up. Fucking I'm a child. Fan. I'm a- it's fucking goddamn mayhem show time. Read the email so I keep making this face. Uh, okay, then. <laughs> the title of the email is Ernest the Cat Hemingway Miller's The Short <laughs> Happy Life of Francis O'Rourke. O'Rourke. Wow. O'Rourke. O'Rourke McComber. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Dear the Wrestling Mayhem Show, I really hope that Daniel Bryan and Brothers Against the Shield World Tour continues for at least another year. Brothers of Destruction, Rhodes Family, The Usos, John Cena, and his brother from another mother, Darren Young, all of them teaming up with Bryan to face the Shield. Tell me it wouldn't be great. You can't. I want to with see another... Kurt Eric, while we're at Kurt and Eric Angel. Hmm. With another wrestling is arm cut down by an invading force, I wonder what promotion is up next on the chopping block. Will the Bacabella gang, on behalf of Toots Mont, of course, stomp the life out of art? Will the Polar Baron and his cronies and comrades shut our fun? Tune in, same quacking time, same quacking station. That is a sentence. I was glad to see TNA wrap up last week with their strong, independent, domineering, in-charge character desperately clinging to the <laughs> leg of a geriatric orange grandpa. Really drives home how much control Dixie's got over things. Here's something to wrap your minds around. JoJo probably has more wins on Raw this year than Wade Barrett. Keep on trucking, the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Your pal, Leg Kick. TKO. P.S. Always remember to spin your giants clockwise to prevent wrinkles from forming. And there is a GIF. One sec. I'm going to put it over Mike's face here. And there you go. Uh, it was Cesaro great. being a boss. It was great seeing Cesaro show do this uh, in Pittsburgh last night. It was pretty amazing. Just keep swinging. Just keep swinging. Swinging. Is swinging. The one just night. keep swinging. Just keep swinging. 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 So just there you go. Swinging. So a little uh, a uh, 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 jump a little bit into the indie minute with that one. Uh, but in the meantime, I do want to mention to you guys, we got a couple things going on with the website and everything before we get into all of that. Uh, of course, we have uh, we done this last month with all the shows. Uh, here in the Pittsburgh area. But if you are in the Pittsburgh area, go check out the Twitter account. Uh, we are giving away two free tickets to RWA's Bloody Harvest coming up this weekend. We'll talk the wheels about it here in a couple minutes. Um, this is going to be a really big show, really fun show last year. Uh, really big, big show last month with friend of the show, uh, uh, Ryan Edmonds, of course, getting his haircut. So we'll see what's going to happen this week here. Uh, but keep an eye. Go follow at Mayhem Show. Look for those tweets. We're putting them out a few different times here. Uh, throughout these couple of days, retweet that one. It says retweet this for the RWA uh, tickets for two tickets for that. Uh, so please do that. Also, we have a survey. If I remember off the top of my head, I believe it was a Bitly slash Mayhem survey. Yes, it is. Uh, bit dot ly slash uh, Mayhem survey. Uh, go there. That's your chance to get. Uh, 
if we're going to have a drawing of the people that submitted. We have, already have a few that have submitted for John Cena, My Life DVD set. Three DVDs uh, circa around 2007, so some early John Cena stuff. Uh, so pretty cool there uh, to see kind of a blast from the past there. So go bit.ly slash uh, mayhem survey. Remember, that's bit dot ly for bit.ly slash mayhem survey. And uh, let us know what you think of the show. We've been getting some really good feedback, some really intriguing feedback, some really mic angering feedback sometimes. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> I will find out who you are, anonymous. Yes, anonymous. No, come to your house. No, I'll no, 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 no! Don't threaten them. We want their honest opinions. No, I'm not. Sorry, I'm not threatening. I will come to their house and prove that I am with the lights. <laughs> he will bring you brownies. Uh, there will. you go. And they will not have hashish in them. Going with kindness, man. Uh, there you go. Uh, but then, uh, please go check that. Do the survey. We're giving away stuff. We're giving away tickets. We're trying to do more of this to give back to the fans. And of course, stay tuned. We got a big fan thing coming up here in December. Just saying, Mark. I believe it's December seventeenth. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, you might want to keep that open uh, and and be sure you got the car all gassed up. Uh, oh. So, hmm, we'll have more That's details that coming. Uh, some of you already got an invite. Some of you guys already got an invite to that. So, check your mailboxes there on the Facebooks. Uh, so, so, with that, you know, we've already touched on it. Uh, 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 Eamon, what is going on with the Wrestling Is promotion? Another one bites the dust? Another one, and I guess to go over it a bit, well, I guess to sort of introduce it, we did get another email from Alex Cars uh, concerning the wrestling and his stuff. So he uh, writes, uh, Roses are red, violets are blue. I am Chikara, and so can you. I don't... I can also... Okay, I... Yeah. Hello, 10 Percenters. It's your boy Alex Cars with the latest <laughs> update on Chikara. The next phase of hashtag I am Chikara is underway as the fans have been called to promote the company in various non-wrestling avenues. Meanwhile, various clues have come up that link to the current angle to wrestlers from as far back as the first year of the promotion. Fun times! Tomorrow I am hosting a set of online rally-type events via Google Hangout. If you're interested in checking it out, join us at the Power to the Smarts channel on YouTube. Until next time, this is Alex Cars reminding you to keep your eyes to the skies for a certain winged ringed warrior and his air force. Okay. Yeah. So go check that out at the uh, Power to the Sparks uh, site and all that good stuff. Um, yeah. So wrestling is uh, had some interesting developments uh, this past weekend. Uh, I mentioned uh, wrestling is awesome. Had their tournament to crown their champion. That was eventually won by 3.0 member Scott Parker. Uh, however, things sort of seemed to take a turn uh, of sorts when uh, Dr. Cube, who many of you may know as uh, one of the lead supervillains uh, in a little promotion called Kaiju Big Battle, uh, attacked, uh, basically, and uh, basically killed the company very much in the way that uh, the group known as Gekido killed Wrestling is Intense about a month or so ago. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be some interesting stuff. Uh, it was definitely... A shift. I'm I'm interested to see how this develops. Um, I'm wondering if you're going to see a lot more of those top heel stables that have occurred over Chikara, sort of slowly taking out these wrestling is promotions. Uh, apparently, it's just not one group of people that's doing it. So that's definitely uh, yeah, providing a bit of intrigue. Uh, I encourage you to check out all the wrestling is stuff of the remaining five of the seven wrestling is promotions uh, that are in various parts of the United States. Um, go check them out because uh, you may see some stuff that uh, is definitely developing and leading to something that could, you know, be the result of this whole Chikara uh, nonsense. And, and so people clarify, if you want to look for some of them, there's Wrestling is Heart, Wrestling is Respect, uh, Wrestling is Fun. Um, what are some other ones out there? Wrestling is Cool. Wrestling is Cool. And Wrestling is... I can't remember the last one you haven't said. Well, anyways, uh, you know, I, had, I was trying to look some stuff up, see if I could find some footage or anything from uh, this event you're talking about. And I noticed I pulled up the Wrestling Is Off some website, and, and if you go to like any page here, they're 404. So um, they're going. Yes, the, the same thing that happened with the uh, Intense website. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, so interesting, intriguing developments there. Kind of curious what they're going to do with. Maybe that. it's that Blue Hippo. Maybe it's that Blue Hippo's fault that wrestling what? that Jakar is dead. What blue hippo? The one on the 404 page. That's a gator. Is it a gator? It's okay, from it's a gator. gator. 
I wouldn't hold it. I wouldn't put it past Jakara to have someone in a giant gator out to be the one responsible for taking down all these promotions. Hey, that's a replacement for Dragon Dragon, right? Exactly. Yeah. Poor Dragon Dragon. Poor, mm. poor Dragon Dragon. So, yeah, uh, go check them out. Go follow them. Uh, and if there's a Wrestling Is promotion near you, I definitely encourage you to check it out because you won't just find information about what could happen to Jakara, but you could also see some good wrestling. And that's always fun. Uh, so there's a, a couple of events. I'm sorry? There's always a danger of that. Always a danger. Uh, there's a couple of events that are happening this weekend that I encourage you to check out. Uh, the first being a big doubleheader event if you're in the Voorhees, New Jersey area. Uh, for CZW and WSU, they're holding a doubleheader October 12th, which is this Saturday. Uh, WSU's Blood and Thunder event, which should be a really awesome event, uh, including Jessica Havoc defending the WSU championship against Lexus. A no disqualification match between former Shimmer champion Soraya Knight and Mickey Knuckles. Uh, there's going to be a ton of awesome stuff, really cool stuff uh, from WSU. And then the same day is the CZW event. Uh, that'll be happening as well. Uh, both of those events you can actually check out on iPayPerview at CZ iPayPerview. Uh, no, sorry, CZW iPayPerview.com. Uh, and yeah, you can check out both of those events, uh, order them, and see for yourself. From what I hear, the that website, as far as iPayPerviews, have seemed to be doing really good with the iPayPerview stuff. Uh, I haven't heard of any problems. Um, which is always good because we've mentioned before the stuff with eye pay per views and and it's danger. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely should be a, a very interesting time. I encourage you to check out both Combat Zone Wrestling and Women's Superstars Uncensored. Uh, and like I said, go check out CZWIPayPerView dot com to see it on eye pay per view, or you can see it live in Voorhees, New Jersey, at the Flyer Skate Zone. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, we mentioned it a bit before uh, with our contest that we're having, but RWA has an event this weekend for Bloody Harvest 5 in West Newton, Pennsylvania. Sorgatron Media will be there, Woo! as always. Yes, Sor- and we do have, talking about this is uh, the man who usually joins us around this time. He contributes to the Wrestling Mayhem show and all that. Uh, he is the man behind the, the sounds of the RWA. So let us know what's coming up there. Uh, Wheels... I can find What's up, here. everybody? What's up, man? Uh, uh, so sorry, I, sorry, I had the noise earlier. I'm up at the Cal U campus, sitting there promoting a show for Saturday. Awesome, awesome, uh, and that's Cal U P A, not in California, California. Just to exactly, clarify. we're not that widespread. Although we have, we got a boy down in Long Beach. So tell me what what's coming up. What what's going on? We have fallout. We got people getting haircut last last uh, month with R W A. Uh, what are we expecting here? Uh, we are expecting, one, a TLC match for the RWA Tag Team titles between the A-List and good old Wild West. This feud has been going on for a while, as you know, Sorg, mm-hmm. and it's been pretty br- pretty bitter lately. I mean, women going through tables and injuries, so maybe there will be some retribution for the A-List. And also, we have another main event of the circle of Ryan Mitchell and Ryan Edmonds versus Lodi and Scotty Matthews. Hey, keep in mind, that is WCW's Lodi, the old sign guy, and he's still going with the sign guy kind of gimmick. Yes, he is. I mean, I, I told you like a couple weeks ago, Sorg, that it's kind of weird looking at the guy. You look back then to now, it's it's amazing. It's surprising what the difference a few years make. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he can still go. So, uh, and we're expecting a return from uh, one of RWA's uh, wrestlers who hasn't been around for a couple months. He's been touring the international area. And that is uh, our friend. Hold on, because I'm forgetting his name offhand. And I got to go to the website that I updated. So. <laughs> Oh, John Schuyler. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, he'll be making his return. We don't know who he's going to go against. But whoever it is, I feel sorry for because he's a hungry young talent. Excellent. So, that is what, so far, you can find out if a little bit more of what's going on with RWA on our Facebook, on our updated New look of the RWA Live.com website, thanks to Sorgatron 
helping me with some suggestions. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, go check out rwalive.com. Thanks, Wheels, for joining us. Not and a problem. We'll Thank you for you. having me, sir. We'll see you there Saturday. And, uh, and as usual, we get a lot of tweets. You'll see a lot of pictures and stuff from the event. If you follow me on Twitter, a lot of us, uh, Chachi included there. We have a lot of fun there out there at RWA. So what else is going on there, Eamon, in the Indie Minute? Other things. Other things are happening. Uh, also for stuff of people on the show. And because, of course, I'm on the show, I'm going to self-promote this. Because it's this Sunday, Inspire Pro Wrestling has their big event, uh, The Quick and the Dead. It is going to be an awesome show. I'm very, very nervous and excited. And um, I'm excited to uh, get back in that commentary station again. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, we got a couple uh, big matches. Uh, the final semifinal match uh, in the road to crowning the Inspire Pro champion. Uh, the fi- that semifinal will be Scott Summers, Jordan Jensen, and Ricky Starks. The winner of that joins Mike Dell and Davey Vega in the eventual title match. Uh, we've got JT LaMata uh, on his road to uh, eventual retirement, uh, going against uh, his longtime rival Andy Dalton in a street fight. Uh, the Texas return of Robert Evans, uh, who looks very similar to a man possibly from a promotion called Chikara, uh, taking on JoJo Bravo in what should be a spectacular match. Uh, friend of the show, Ray Rose, taking on one man, Mike Dell. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff. A lot of the young talent in the Texas area. A lot of up-and-comers. Uh, and I am very excited. It should be another su- super fun event. Uh, if you want to check that out, uh, you can go to inspireprowrestling.com. Buy tickets for that event uh, this Sunday, October 13th, at the Marquesa Hall and Theater in downtown Austin, Texas. Uh, it's going to be a really fun show. I'm very excited, and I hope that you are, if you are in anywhere in the Texas area, you'll come on down and uh, join in on the fun, because it should be a really, really fun time. And whoever have, you have doing that, uh, that, that teaser video that's been going around is devastating, by the way. Uh, so go <laughs> check that out for sure. Um, with the uh, uh, Inspire Pro. Cool stuff going on down there in Texas. And you guys you guys are doing DVDs too soon too, right? Uh, well, well, hopefully we'll pull a lot of our stuff out online. Okay. Uh, we are That's definitely right. going to look to get... stuff is online for you to check out right now. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully we'll, we're will we going to be working a lot with, uh, especially this show, with the guys at Greenlist Studios that are going to help produce our stuff. So it should be fun stuff. I'm, I'm excited to uh, get that stuff out there to uh, all, all the yeah, people that want to check thing- it out. And I and I, I feel like we don't touch on this enough on this show. I, uh, when we try to w- t- talk about indie wrestling, or try not to talk about the guys that don't have DVDs, that if you're not in that area, you don't have the opportunity to. So it may seem like, oh, I'm in Texas. I'm not in. Pit- I'm not in Texas. I'm not in Pittsburgh. I'm not in Maine, wherever wrestling is. Uh, is uh, but what the wrestling is, it's always available usually through Smart Mark Video. Uh, yeah. And we need. We we do need a big. Ba- do a better job of saying that uh of course rwa is available through our own sorgatronmedia.com slash store uh the, and of course you're available online uh for for inspire pro czw obviously is available in multiple outlets same with wsu with those ip reviews we're talking about so uh, mm-hmm. the whole idea uh, uh we really want to say hey you know you're enjoying your wwe you're enjoying your tna maybe uh your ring of honor here's some other stuff that's alternatives that you can get in other ways it's not just what you tune into on spike tv on usa network there are right. a lot of other stuff out there so that's why we dip in this every week and and i know it gets a little easy for us to just talk about the stuff we're involved with i'm just glad to see some yeah. different stuff i uh, i will also note that next week's uh spoiler alert next week's indie minute is going to be chock full of stuff because everyone's running next weekend like exactly. everyone and we are looking at some resources <laughs> we were just talking about there's a newsletter going around and i don't know how we got on this uh, but we started receiving these newsletters that have a giant list. What well, looks like every indie wrestling event going on in that week. Yeah, there's it wrestling is everywhere. Amazing! Guys. It is amazing. I almost want to just like post that on Facebook every once in a while. Just be like, "Hey, you think there's no wrestling in your town? Well, look at this list. See if there's something mm-hmm. that looks familiar. You know, see if there's something." And, that's if, and also, I mean, if you do have wrestling in your town, if you, if you think it's something that we should definitely talk about here on the Mayhem Show, I encourage you. If there's a promotion that you love, if there's a promotion that even like you just found out about and you're looking to maybe attend, send uh, send us info at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow dot com, and we will definitely uh, mention on the indie we- indie minute and uh, get the word out there. We would love to do that. Definitely. Thanks a lot uh, for your indie minute. That's it, right? 
Yes, that okay. is it. For the indie man. Uh, I'm going to go try to breathe down. <laughs> all right. Another way, hey, Angsy, another way is we like, we like you guys to interact with us, but another way to do that is on your iPhone, on your Apple device, on your uh, Android device as well. Mike's got one over there, too. He's got, his, the, he's got his iPad mini going on there. He's got the wonderful Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold app available on your Apple App Store and Amazon App Store for the Android. Um, gives you quick hits. All those contacts we we talk about at the beginning of the show, straight from your phone, including the phone number uh, to call in so you can drunk dial us. We encourage it. Um, at email. I used to Twitter. drunk dial the show all the time. It's used to all the time in various different voices as well. Dollar mm-hmm. ninety nine. It's a, it helps us. The show gives a little bit, not very much, but it's more just a cool thing for you guys to have on your phone. And we do have bonus content. Some of the stuff we have before, or after, in the middle of segments here on the show, we include there so you can check out. So it is kind of like the extra behind the scenes features, and we kind of talk about. You can find more about Eamon and how exhausted he really was when he first showed up here uh, after dicking that bear. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so go <laughs> check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold app if we haven't told you enough about making you want to 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 get it and dollar 99 for your bear dicking here's a little snippet to get you more enticed and, and, and just request psyduck and snorlax what was it psyduck and Psyduk. snorlax those two would get it on carter's hot man but i didn't Shut up, no way she's no Shut up, no way, dude. She's 25. She's hot. Ah, 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 you're here. Ah. Talk, I'm here. He's here. Hello. Everybody, he Wait. made it. Did you run? <laughs> A little bit. Hey guys, welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Go check that out. RWA, of course, over on the Sorgatron Media Store. And of course, the Mayhem Show uh, Gold app on your respective smart device. Uh, so this is the point where uh, we like to look back. We like to throw back and, and remember the good times in pro wrestling. Remember, remember some memories, right? Uh, how about some... Remember when... All right. Now this week on Remember When, I you know I I, I this is something that I know we're going to discuss a little bit later uh, at probably at more length, Mike. So let's not start the fight yet. But <laughs> yes. watching watching the pay per view this weekend, watching uh, Raw last night live in Pittsburgh, and maybe last night is because I was there in Pittsburgh. Um, but I got a feeling. I haven't felt for a little bit yet, you know? Uh, maybe a little bit, you know? Maybe that, that CM Punk moment when he won the belt last year. Maybe the first time Daniel Daniel Bryan won the belt, I felt a little bit. Um, but it's I hearken this, this feeling back to the day when I got into wrestling, when I watched Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant, when I watched, you know, any big moment in wrestling, you know, that big, exciting moment. And for me, for me, it's like this chill down my spot. You know, and and that's like the 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 pinnacle moment where I'm bought into wrestling. Um, I'm really excited about what's going on, and that's what I got. You know, say a battleground when when Big Show finally came around and punched out everybody in the ring. You know, I got that last night when he finally punched out Triple H and that whole standoff situation there. Now, Mike, this this uh, that uh, what I describe is this kind of chill down my spine kind of kind of you know, feeling of euphoria, you know, uh, you describe as, uh, the tingle in your balls. Yes. You, it's you a know, little bit yeah. different for each of us, but we get the idea. It's that moment of excitement. You're like, yes, that was awesome. Right. Uh, like kind of the pinnacle of that. If you're completely bought in the wrestling, you're completely enjoying wrestling. Uh, and there's a really good, you know, moment like that. Uh, so I, I, I thought we could go around and say, you know, 
well, one, it, I, I guess we can turn this into a two-parter since we already know no mics and, and mine. Like, what is your equivalent of that for you? You know, do you get a feeling when when that? Do you get butterflies in your stomach when when something like that happens? And what what what's a one moment in particular you uh, uh, you know can kind of think about? That? I think I kind of already gave mine here. Uh, so, uh, Mike, you gave what your feeling is. Uh, what what what's a, a good memory of when you know maybe that was at the height, other than puberty. Uh- um, the most recent one I think I had was when I went to the Raw after WrestleMania on my 30th birthday and Dolph Ziggler cashed in. Mm-hmm. Because I honestly, I was going through my camera last night because I was just getting stuff off of it. And I found the video again and I watched it again and I got that same sensation just because the atmosphere in that building was so like palpable like it wanted like everyone in that arena wanted that to happen so badly and it was it was really really special doesn't it seem like you kind of in moments like that like you feel it's like everybody has this shared energy Mm -hmm. oh that whole arena that whole night felt like there's a shared energy and i think Mm -hmm. it's because just about everyone there was disappointed with WrestleMania the night before, which probably at least 90% of that arena was at. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think that was kind of like, it's like, like we were all disappointed in WrestleMania, but we went to Raw the night after because most of us had tickets anyway. So seeing what we wanted to happen at WrestleMania happen in a much smaller intimate venue, it was just like, Yes. Like it was just awesome. Awesome. Uh, what about you, LB? Do you have what? What? What is that equivalent of that feeling for you? Uh, is it any different? You know, and what? What kind of moment uh, comes to your mind? Um. Well, the the feeling exactly we were talking about. I get it in my gut. It's a strong, tight feeling in my gut. You know what I mean? It, it kind of spread down your arms because it's very. And especially when you realize it, when you realize you're watching something absolutely, truly special. Um, now, I, I have two examples that I want to that I want to mention. The first one um, that where I absolutely got that feeling was uh, WrestleMania, something or other. I don't know. It was Shawn Michaels Taker number one, and I watched that match. Watched it. Uh, excuse me, many, many times since then, and it's amazing. It, every single time, there's never been a time where I've watched it and been like, yeah, incredible each and every time. Um, the other time, um, this, this was different. Uh, this was uh, a different feeling. Um, it was my first live Raw, and it was in Pittsburgh, obviously. And uh, it was before they did the first one-night stand pay-per-view. And uh, a bunch of ECW guys came back that night, uh, and including people who hadn't been in the company before, like Sabu showed up. And, and uh, I don't remember who else. It doesn't matter. Fucking Sabu showed up, and he's one of my favorite wrestlers. Um, and I stood on my feet and chanted ECW so hard and so loud, I passed out and had to sit down. Awesome. So what? those are my uh, my two examples. What about you, Eamon? Uh The closest one that I can think of personally, um, and this was sort of earlier in my wrestling fandom, um, but it still sort of meant a lot and sort of gave like a euphoric sort of feeling when it actually happened was uh, the uh, – and, and obviously it was tarnished, but the Chris Benoit win at WrestleMania 20, mm-hmm. um, it was very unexpected. Uh, and it was just something that the, the image was very much like a, it was, it was, was like a once in a lifetime sort of image to see the celebration afterwards. And it, I mean, it, it obviously stuff happened and, but it's still something that sort of sticks in your mind is like one of those like really, really memorable moments that sort of gave you sort of this feeling of excitement. Mm-hmm. So I may have cried but, a little bit. During it. Yeah. It, what was it? It was one of those like these guys made it because these were the two you saw, you know, exit WCW. They were the promising ones you knew were never going to make it, and they did it. And they were both on top, and they were the future. You know, it, it's so and, and uh, yeah, and then it's so sad what happened to both those guys. 
at WrestleMania after WrestleMania 20. So yeah. So um, let's see if anybody. For, nope. Uh, so yeah, tell us. You know, what's your moment? What's your feeling? You know, I, I think I think anybody that's into wrestling has something like that, and that's I feel like that's that's the reason you're into it, right? Is to get that mm-hmm. feeling. Like sometimes I get that at indie shows. You know, I, Amy, you probably have the same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not limited to WWE. That's yeah, just the yeah, way it's I just think, like but... it's that feeling. I was like, wow, I'm seeing something special here. You know, Sork, I, Sork, yeah. I had that when um, Ray Rowe was challenging Chess Sork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, because then Ray Rowe challenged me, and well, I, I I'm still owed an IWC title shot. Still. <laughs> Yeah, definitely being ringside for things like that and being involved like that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely pretty cool. Um, so with that, uh, yeah, let us know what's your moment and everything. Hashtag, hashtag remember when on Twitter, at Mayhem Show. Uh, hit us up. And of course, the Facebook and Google Plus, you can uh, go on there as well. Find us. You know, let us know. Uh, and and if you're responding to this video, as because we stumped this piece out. Some of you guys don't know. We take the little remember ones. We take the indie minutes. We would split them out, stick them out on YouTube by themselves. See if anybody latches onto the shorter versions of, the sh- of parts of the show and uh, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to get into uh, more, and I'm going to start duking it out with Mike here, I think, uh, about Battleground in particular. Uh, he's putting his dukes up all right. But first, Mike, we have T-shirts, you know. We have T-shirts. We have T-shirts. We have the best T-shirts uh, that money can buy representing of a wrestling podcast uh, such as ours. Uh, thanks to ProWrestlingTees.com uh, and the great Alex Cars uh, for a lot of these t-shirt designs, the non-logo ones at least. The Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show, the property of Mayhem. I wore that at the pod camp this week in the Wrestling Mayhem Show logo. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS is a way for you to support the show and show your colors, fly your Mayhem colors. Uh, going to your indie shows, going to your Monday Night Raws, your Royal Rumbles, whatever it may be. Say, hey, I'm a Mayhemmer. Uh, I'm, part, I'm a Mayhem American. I'm part of the Mayhem Nation. And while you're here, there's a lot of great other stuff. There's still some Dusty Rhodes there, stuff there. I'm sorry, Dustin Rhodes, Gold Dust uh, kind of t-shirts. And, I'll, you know, Christopher Daniels, Cole Cabana, Joey Ryan, Trent Beretta, Sonny, if you're not giving, uh, calling her, you can get her t-shirt. ACH. Big LG, cheerleader Melissa, all kinds of people. This goes on and on. Shark Boy, look, it's Shark Boy, guys. Um, Matt Cross, Give me a shell, yeah, great stuff. Uh, go to ProWrestlingTees.com and throw a Mayhem Show shirt in your in your uh, uh, shopping cart while you're at it. Uh, so let's get to it. Battleground, Mike. I love yes. this. I liked it. I like the show. I like this BS middle of the road uh, pay per view we got to see Sunday night from Buffalo of all places. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I I watched it. I was on a little bit of delay, so I watched it detached from Twitter, detached from you guys in the hangout, and just watched and enjoyed. I didn't hate the pay per view. Okay. I didn't hate the pay per view and. I knew the main event was going to be some sort of bullshit ending where we didn't get a champion. Okay. The way Everybody they did it is what the way they did it is what bothered me. Okay. Because it's it was so awkward. Okay. Really like, was it? So awkward. Okay. Why would anyone cheer for Big Show after what he just did? Okay, yes. And why can't why does that end the match? He hit both guys. Just keep the match going. Okay. Okay. Well, again, you know, a lot of uh, creative, you know, you know, more, why were there no more referees? Why is all this? I don't care. The whole point of this was, no, we didn't get a winner, but we got Big Show. I don't know who, I don't know who tweeted. I think it was LaBar or somebody tweeted. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't get it. We have a pay per view, and we don't even know what side Big Show is on. We know what size Big, what side Big yeah, Show is Big on. Show. Big Show came out, did what he was told to do, and then finally said, then got fed up, and, and it's you know, 
Yes, he knocked out Daniel Bryan, but he turned and knocked out the other guys too. He had enough. That was his breaking point. And no, we didn't get a champion, but we got a resolution that Big Show wasn't going to be the lackey anymore. But, uh, okay, and that's all well and good, but you can still do that while having some sort of, not resolution where you get a champion, but something where the crowd is like, at least they have a question of what's going on. Like, we've seen double pins before. Mm -hmm. Why not have Big Show knock out both guys? He puts an arm on each of them where both shoulders are down. Then a ref counts both men down. Then what does that do that's different than what we got here? Because it's not Big Show awkwardly standing on the rope, posing like he did something when he basically screwed everyone out of the... Main, like <laughs> but he did do match. something. He screwed everybody out of the main event. <laughs> I think I think that's the most significant work. thing. You got you ended the night with Big Show. Uh, finally, not taking crap from from the authority. I didn't know we gave them a name sometime in this last week anymore. Uh, okay. uh, laid waste to absolutely everybody that was important to that match still happening. Okay, right. But why does that make him a good guy? Does it make? Why not? You, you, you he's, he's taking on the establishment that's been screwing him over. It's a stone cold. One don't. Wouldn't you like to punch out your boss kind of situation too? Um, no, it, no, I don't have an issue with Wade on Monday. Okay, Monday was magical and fantastic, and it was perfect. And Triple H actually sold it instead okay. of saying, "Who knocked me out?" WCW's giant. You know, he didn't do any of that shit. It was fine, but. At Battleground, there are so many better ways of doing that. At least have him knock out Brad Maddox. At the very least, like, have Brad run out in a referee shirt. Like, he's going to drag Daniel on top, and then Big Show knocks him out. Okay. Have, have something. But instead, it's just an awkward thing where everyone's lying down in the ring, and Big Show's like, well, we need something to end the show on, so I'm just going to pose on the ropes. <laughs> I don't think like, it came off. I, in my opinion, I don't think it came off quite so awkward. Uh, uh, you you weren't in that arena, Sorg. I'm sure everyone in that arena was like, uh, what the fuck? It was a raw ending. Yeah, yeah. And then we can get to the, the argument, is it worth a $65 show? And I'm going to argue, no, I don't think any WWE program is these days. And that's why a lot of people are watching it and other methods like bars um, or friends' houses. I, I've or, also had a lot of disputes of the fact that, you know, with this sort of non-finish, it's sort of like a slap in the face to the people that bought the that paid the 60 bucks or whatever for the pay-per-view. I'm just surprised people still think that when WWE is proven like time and time again, they don't give a shit about the live audience. Yeah, I, and I don't think I don't think we And the live audience probably paid way we, more we don't, than whoever paid for the pay-per-view. I, I don't think WWE I don't think fans and again, you know, fans are a different level. And they're like, oh, well, you know, they're going into this as if they're going into watching a UFC show, right? Um, and how many times do you not really get a clear winner in UFC shows? I mean, not to this extent. Well, you, I know. Maybe no, but example. at UFC shows, you always get a winner. Mm -hmm. it, may, it may be disputed. Exactly. You always get a winner, but they're actual judges in UFC. So, so you're you're we're mad that there nobody was even even in weird swervy. Maybe he didn't get pin ways. Nobody actually got a pin. Is that is that what we're mad about? When there was no winner declared, even if it was uh, a questionable winner, it, like that's what would have made you happier with it, with this with this kind of ending. I just wanted it done better. Okay. Because it, it was done like I like I. Um, participate in this site where you have pay-per-view predictions. Yeah. I predicted the main event would be a no contest. Yeah. I didn't think anything was going to happen in that because we have Hell in a Cell in three weeks. Yeah. If anything was going to happen, it'd be Orton winning via fast count or something. Mm -hmm. But, but do it better where a show just does because you don't have evil getting punished. You don't have evil getting punished at all. Why, why not? Why not? Well, well, what did Randy Orton get punched in the face? Didn't didn't the yeah, the, the obvious plan of the bad uh, leaders of this company get thwarted? Yeah, but Big Show doesn't look smart. Then he just looks like a person who punches people. No, Big Show. Big Show now looks better than he's looked in months. Yes, he's been crying. He's been made to look like a bitch. He's been made to look weak. And finally, he's 
you know, standing out on his own. And he's proven that he can not only beat uh, or at least knock out uh, the number one contender and the title. Well, I guess they're both number one contenders. He can beat both of them. I think I think they did really well and they did really well last night. The bigger their biggest mistake after she fired said, "You made the biggest mistake of your life because now I have nothing left to lose." Yeah. If he had said that, I think it would have framed everything nicely. He should have knocked out Steph right after she fired. No, I don't think they're going to do that. No, I uh, no, I know. If this were the Attitude Era, he absolutely would have. Exactly. Oh, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. If this were the Attitude Era. <laughs> You're like slap, 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 slap. You're fired. Really? I'm fired. Bam! <laughs> right to the face. <laughs> I, I, you know, the whole time I was watching, I was like, I just want him to like pick her up and like put her on top of the, you know, turnbuckle or something, and just <laughs> or, like I mean, pat her on the head. You know, I mean, like when King something did, demeaning um, but not hurting her. You know, well, no, like what Kane did when uh, Undertaker won a match with Triple H. Kane grabbed Stephanie. And held her in a military press on a top of a scaffolding, and Taker was just like, "So, uh, can I get my match now?" <laughs> and Triple H was like, "What are you doing? Stop it!" And Taker just said, "Okay, send Stephanie on down here." Like you he didn't hurt her at all. But, yeah, yeah. Like there should have been. I something. remember that. It was like a stairwell, and it's like this awkward look up, and you just see her like, like you think that's her, and you hear her screaming, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was great. I thought last night was great. I thought the Stephanie Big Show segment was really great, especially because it's literally, and I said it multiple times, but it was literally like Big Show was like a petulant child and Stephanie was his abusive mother. <laughs> like not the <laughs> slapping and stuff like that, but also like Big Show being like, can I go now? Like I thought that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and especially you—you you talked about this in the past, like how it is, like she's talking. Well, we say it's like she's talking down to one of her kids, but mm. she's looking up. You know, this this she, entire. She time. sounds very experienced in what she is saying. Exactly, exactly. Just like let's just go be a mother. Um, yeah, <laughs> she I, I does that with Brad Maddox too. Yeah, yeah. Like but, I thought, I thought Brad was grounded for all of three hours. Right <laughs> and Mad, and then, but then Max responds by acting like he just got grounded too, like completely perfectly. Um, like uh, the way he was stumbling last night, I noticed was 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 really fantastic. I don't think Brad gets used enough, but when he does, I think he Absolutely. makes the most of it. I mean, this is a, is a great character that he's he's doing here, and he's not afraid to be the smaller character, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And I think he does a really good good job with it for, for sure. Um, so yeah. I mean, other than that, I mean, so 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 and the big so you're, other than the ending, I mean, uh, I, I and really, I got this moment too with the Dusty. Match. Amazing, amazing. The, the, the oh, Rhodes match. Was um, it was a great moment seeing you know all the roads coming back. This is another one where we're like, oh, what are See, they doing? What the heck's I, going on? And it's come back around. And for you know, for a throwaway pay per view, there was a good bit of resolution. I kind of wish that ended the pay per view. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, because I mean, if you have something like the Shield attack Dustin backstage or something like that, mm-hmm. and and they say, oh, we have to delay the match a little bit. Let's have the world title match now and end it with the Shield and the Rhodes family. I don't think people would have been as sour on the pay-per-view because you had an ending that you could actually go home with. Yeah. You know yeah, but I mean? then you're booking it for the ending and not for, like, the physical, like, progression. But not the for ship. the experience. Yeah. But you can I, I, still I, have I, the I, same I ending the, for the World Title match. Yeah. I thought the, I thought, it's I in just the thought middle that. of the show, so it's actually... It's not some... It's, like, the last image that you see in a pay-per-view should be an answer. Not a question. Regardless of how it finishes, it should be an answer, not a question. I think that was WCW's fault. They did that all the time. They, they did that. All, they did that all the time. Uh, I think nine times out of ten, that is correct. I think on personally, personally on WWE Battleground, when it's the second pay per view of three pay per views in a matter of like a month and a half, it's fine to have that ending. Mm-hmm. It's fine to have a questionable ending. I think. Yeah, well, it's That's fine just... to have a questionable ending, but at least have some sort of definitive thing to it. Like, if you had Randy Orton arguing with Big Show while Daniel Bryan was knocked out, okay, that's fine. Have it go long enough where Bryan can get up, and right after Big Show punches him, 
he turns around into the Daniel Bryan running knee. At least that you have, like, because Big Show, he may be a face, but he was still sent out there by the heels. Mm-hmm. Like, you right, know what yeah. I mean? Like, he still ruined the title match. Daniel Bryan is the one everyone wants to cheer. Not Big Show. Not until last night, anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one has cheered Big Show in a month because he's been emasculated. But, you know, but yeah. he's still... I disagree. No, no, when sy- he punched, sympathy. I disagree. When he punched him, he got a good reaction. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's been the sympathy character, and that's been building for the month. Yeah, but what... Why would you end a show on a sympathy character? Coming back not? around and, and, and everybody because getting he's, back he's behind. the sympathy character getting his revenge. There you go. But he didn't he didn't get it fully until Monday night. Wow. That's why right, that's if fine. he if he had knocked, out, left? If he had knocked out Brad Maddox on the way back. What problem does he have with Brad Maddox though? Brad Maddox is just the stooge. Exactly. He's the representative of the power there. Not Randy so Orton. Randy Orton is a puppet. Randy Orton is a puppet and a tool that Triple H and Stephanie are using. So is Brad Maddox. No. But Brad Maddox was in charge of the show. All right. Let's let's hold that for now. And then we'll come back around. Of course, the Rose family. Great to see them doing it. What do you think they're going to do with Goldust here in the next few months? A little bit of speculation. Rumor is he's going to be around at least until uh, WrestleMania. I'm excited. (laughs) So <laughs> Whatever he does will be okay, right? I, I, know, I he, he could just go help out NXT or do NXT matches and help them out or something. I'm cool with that. I mean, good I for I want him. him somehow involved with Cody and Damian Sandow in the world title. Wouldn't it be fantastic if uh, he stuck around and did a tag team with Cody for for a while? Well, I could, I could, I could get behind that. Yeah. They should take the belts off the shield. Yeah. Like at TLC. I can see that. Intercontinental title. There you go. Mm. Take on Curtis Axel, get that thing back. He's the one. Yeah, fuck you, he's fuck one you, Curtis Axel. Gold to have a run with that. No, no, you can't have you can't, you cannot have Gold Dust interact with um, anything relating to Paul Heyman. Hmm. It would break the dynamic. You're right. What was I thinking? <laughs> um, okay, then we got CM Punk. Of course, uh, he had he had uh, uh, the win over Ryback and a tag team with Kofi. Or, I'm sorry, our Truth last night. Um, uh, <laughs> um, Art Truth, what are you what doing, is. bro? What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. I don't know. I just don't get so, Art Truth. I don't get. Damon, are you are you asking Art Truth what's up? I'm pretty sure. Pretty he much. That. <laughs> pretty I'm much. Pretty sure he answers that. You're like no, 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 no. <laughs> Seriously, what's up? What's up? What is no. legitimately up, you forty year old hey, man? Hey, you can ask <laughs> what. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he's over 40. You realize that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, and he's still humping the air, because that's a thing 40-year-old. What's, year old what's <laughs> up? His AARP card. That's Here, you can card. tell him yourself. Ask him what's up. No, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I have a genuine question to the listeners of the Wrestling Mayhem show. Okay. Are there real-life legitimate, not just the fan because it's, you know, ironic, actual fans of r-truth out there i really want to know if you're a fan of r-truth please please send us an email to good times at wrestling mayhem show.com i must know why you know you're not going to get those emails you know why you're not going to get those emails because the little kid completely jam into the r-truth music in the in the aisle way mm. that's why that's who i don't think there's too many grown-ups Ugh. doing it i genuinely do like k quick myself um no i think he's talented so when he was younger i still think he's amazing i I love his flip moves i i I mean i think he's 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 he's, oh his finisher that makes no fucking sense not his finisher no when he 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 does like a cross body block but he like spins while he does it i think that's impressive what (laughs) his scissor kick he literally tapped i'm talking about his scissor kick i'm talking about his general wrestling I am legitimately a fan of heel R Truth. Yes, yes, the little Jimmy R Truth. There are spiders in that fucking briefcase, and they drowned in 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 San Antonio. Amen. Amen. Through that yeah. shit, little Jimmy, water bottle 
are true. No, I, lo- I love him beating up John Morrison and yelling Shazam for no reason. Sure. <laughs> sure, why not? I love that as much as a little bull that comes out with the uh, with, uh, Batadorus. But that's entertaining. Our truth, like just being our truth, is not that entertaining. No, no, he's kind of settled into it. I don't but know I why get he's he, again. I get the WWE crowd likes him, but the WWE crowd very much likes anyone that uh, they're supposed to like. You know, they're very, it's and it's not the their point. fault. That's just the. That's kind of the point, isn't it? Yeah, but they should also be entertaining. Like they should be able to like a guy I mean, because they're doing good I'm stuff. I'm buying the collector's cup. I mean, you know. With multiple people on it, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like, <laughs> hey, there's Zack Ryder on this one. Hey, there's an upside down Mark Henry. You see the new one? They're like, it's like a swarm of heads, and they're circled around, and there's like upside down art, uh, uh, upside down. Uh, what the f- sword? Mark you Henry. are high. You want me to go what get the it? Is happening? <laughs> it's weird. It's a swarm of our truth heads, and they're upside <laughs> down. <laughs> That sounds like the next Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I want to take that a picture. Like the hell in the cell I want to take a picture, movie. and I'm going to put whatever uh, Instagram filter is going to be the creepiest and send it to LP. Oh, and God. that's going to be the next thing that keeps him up at night. My God, dude, why don't you plug your Vine on this show? Seriously. Yeah, I should do that more. Uh, you watch my Vine. <laughs> they, they are very <laughs> fine. They're, They're fantastic, and I keep forgetting you do them. And, and the time that I see the tweet is a time that I can't watch video. You know, uh, <laughs> I need like I need like a repository of of your vines to just watch because they're only six i have seconds. i have special time set aside every day to catch up on my vines oh it's fine time there's a lot of the appointment I, appointment I check, television I check my vines right before i go to sleep there you go hey that's not bad it's not a bad idea all right that if anything else i think i'm going to open this up to uh the rest of the round table here so we can have a few more opinions on last night on uh on uh Excuse me. Sorry, I'm clicking buttons. I can't talk at the same time. Um, <laughs> Raw on wrestling? On Raw, on wrestling. On, on wrestling? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, we got with us first, Bobby. Is there anything you want to bring up here, sir? Uh, you, you, you were holding oh, me. Oh, so loud. Holy shit. Sorry. Sorry, it's on your end. I'm sorry. I can't do Everything was that. so... Hold on. No, I'll fix... Go ahead, Bobby. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Normal talk. talk what was your question again? Talk, sorry. Talk so, sorry. Yeah, just just talk so he can adjust. Uh, no, is there anything else you want to bring up? Any big opinions you have about the the shows the last couple days or the last week or anything? Uh, they were pretty decent. Um, the giant swing or the the, the little swing was amazing. <laughs> um, and it was a good end to Raw. Um, battle bat, uh, Battleground. Meh. Yeah, you are you are into it. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Um, oh, Sorg, I have a question for you since you were live there last night. Yes. Um, did anyone have an issue or seem to have an issue with the amount of rematches? No, nobody in the audience did. Although, I, I you know, okay. This because is a, this, every I, match except Brian Orton yeah. and AJ Bree was rematched in some form or fashion. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and I know, and I saw you, you were and, and doing the count Rio on Bam it. Bam. I saw you guys were doing the count on it. And um, um, yes, uh, nobody cared around me. Um, but, but interestingly, uh, they did show in its entirety at the end of last night's match, or the, the night before his match at, at Battleground. Uh, right before Raw, and wow. why would they, you show that again? Because because nothing in the beginning <laughs> would make sense if you didn't see it, okay. right? Uh, yes. So and they well at least like for uh, you wouldn't have gotten as big of a reaction, I don't think, if they were just like, oh, here's the stills, blah blah blah, you know, from the live crowd. They want to get the biggest reaction from the live crowd. So they showed from right before Big Show came out to the end of the pay per view in those few minutes before Raw went on air. Um, and by the reaction, yeah, I don't think anybody saw it. So <laughs> the fact that there are rematches don't matter to anybody except for anybody that is paying 65 bucks to see this thing. Um, and, and that's your inherent problem. We can have a discussion about are they really worth it? Are you actually paying your $65 to see that? That's a whole other kind of discussion when it comes to WWE. And I think, I think, 
it's becoming devalued a bit and they're almost running into a TNA issue. Uh, but especially when they do stuff like this, but they've been doing stuff like this for years, guys, you know, this is nothing new, you know, how many times we said, wow, I saw this match on SmackDown. Wait, what? You know, I mean, we, we got, we got the Kali spin again, you know, but we did get the little addition of like the Hornswoggle one, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, Buy one, get one free. No, but the, uh, definitely uh, where I was in the cheap seats, nobody noticed. Um, but <laughs> Also, that damn map is so hard to read because I thought I was on the other end facing everything. But no, I was behind the set last night. So get your act together, console and ticket map. No, how were the fireworks from there? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and they, okay. I'm like, oh, well, we're going to be deaf by the end of the night. You seats. have those no are... fireworks until 930 when Kofi Kingston came, comes out of all fucking people. And then <laughs> and it was just Kofi and Shawn Michaels. That was it. And that's all I needed. <laughs> At least Kane uh, wasn't there. I'm glad Kane wasn't around because yeah. you don't get a warning for Kane. We hardly got a warning for. I forgot Kofi has pyro because I'm like it's Kofi. Why does he have pyro? Um, <laughs> no, uh, but you do get the warning for like. Trust me, I was at um, oh the, the worst one. I, I was at No Mercy in 2000. Yeah, and we had seats all the way on the floor, but right in the back row by the stage. Yeah, the first and we we moved up for the opening pyro because we didn't want to go through that. So as soon as we got back to our seats, the first people to come out were the Dudleys. There's yeah. literally no warning. It's like <clears throat> it was. Oh my god! You couldn't I mean, hear properly for the rest. The, of the night. worst. The worst experience was when we were at. We we're um, up from like we were like completely like right on with the stage, like beside it. So. Like, like we mostly saw everybody. It was all cool. I we, like we had a little bit of one of those when they used to have the dangly white things on the side. Um, and Batista came out. You remember Batista's pyro? Oh. It's all concussion blasts. <laughs> I thought my ears were bleeding after that one. And and Shawn Michaels last night was almost as bad. Uh, not nearly, but almost. Uh, so, but that was it. You know. Uh, yeah, it, it just I misread it. I got the tickets real quick. I didn't realize I was behind the freaking stage. Um, but Jericho I don't know. scared the crap out of me. Yeah, that'd be a good remember one. When. when did you poop yourself at a live show because of pyro? <laughs> when, when I saw Bray Wyatt do the crap walk. <laughs> it was, it was Bray Wyatt do the crap walk. Bray Wyatt is from hell. <laughs> oh jeez. I put that gift up in the chat before. Riz, do you have anything you want to air? Uh, well, first off, I'm surprised nobody in this chat room who was in the chat room, f the hangout for the uh, the pay per view, brought up the, f the pay per view. Yeah, the pay per view. No, it was our it was our truth and Ryback. So, yeah, it was on the raw. Um, oh yeah. That that they the submissions that Ryback put on our truth were very uh, Kama Sutra like. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, there was um, even some spanking going on. There was. Let's see. The first one was the bear hug that r Truth straddled his legs around Ryback <laughs> and started spanking his own ass. What? I believe Ryback. I believe Ryback also bounced him up and down a couple times. He, he bounced him a lot, and and the abdominal uh, abdom, ab abdominal abdominal abdominal. Stretch. Uh, abominable. I, I'm abominable stretch. Science. I'm an exercise <laughs> science Bounce major, strength? and I don't know how to Bumble's say that. Uh, when he was in that stretch, Bobby, no. he was also <laughs> humping, dry humping, maybe a little bit more than dry humping, but it was very uncomfortable watching that. And he was um, face washing him with his hand. <clears throat> Of course. It was very awkward. It was almost like he was rubbing something in his face. I don't know <laughs> what, but it was very awkward. He is bringing the new he's bringing the term big guy to a whole different level. Rye broke back. Uh, it was like right watching a softcore porn where you know that when it was over that the actors just went somewhere and fucked. Oh yeah. I think Aren't that's that, why I'm Paul pretty... Heyman really, you know, gives him those longing looks. I'm pretty sure our truth and Ryback did, you know, scissor at some point afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Just why not? 
Oh, man. <laughs> uh, awesome. Anything else, guys, before I let you go? Um, bring up. Apparently, Hulk Hogan is gone from TNA. Uh, oh, good. I thought you were going to uh, can, we, can, we oh, can we talk about this? 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 Can we talk about the other Hulk Hogan news that's in the in the, in the no, 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 <laughs> what you what gonna, you gonna, gonna do, brother? Oh, gross. Jinx. Whoa. You know that feeling in the back of my spine? I said I felt when like he slammed Hulk Hogan or when he slammed Andre the Giant. Now I got this feeling that's right. Oh, oh, oh. Now, now you're gonna picture Hulk Hogan in a thong slamming Andre the Giant. I want to know. Went, I want to know. I noticed that you don't have any Hulk Hogan wrestle buddy in uh, in, in <laughs> view there. Um, I, I'm wondering if you just like said no, I can't. Right oh here. no, there he is! Right here. He's gonna wreck you. Sword, sword. <laughs> this looks familiar. Oh, sword. Oh god! This looks familiar. Oh god! Oh god! Okay. Hulk Hogan went wrecking balls deep. No, no, no. God damn it, Bobby. Hulk Hogan is the wreck it Ralph of uh, TNA. I'm trying to get the, the Guinness Book of World Records for most terrible jokes. Sword, <laughs> you know you want to touch it, brother. No, you want to touch it, brother. Stop Riz, it. No, stop touch it, it, brother. Oh, Riz, I'll no. never be able to look at a wrestle blade uh, the same way actually, again. No, it kind of it looked like what he did on in that commercial. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> like, it, 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 it's not really the same color, but it does look like it's up now, and down. I was gonna, like, what is the big deal about Hulk Hogan in a thong? <laughs> no, I, it's I'm Hulk seriously Hogan. asking this. We've seen Hulk Hogan wrestle in barely nothing for 30 years. Granted, uh, we he's saw. an old no, but he's an old man now. But if someone pulled the tights, it's basically the same thing. Like I don't understand. Like, in sexuality. Like, well, well, does you the, know, does the three just, inches of fabric lost really as of mean that much as of of right now? This is the second least things that Hulk Hogan has worn that I was totally sick of. I don't understand the reference. You're making Sorg sad. Rem remember, remember the sex tape, Sorg? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, remember how he felt like a pig afterwards? Down? Remember, Can we remember talk about something players? that is a Hulk Hogan test? No. Russell Fair. No, I'm with Eamon on this one. Let's change that subject. Look yeah. at it. Eamon, new, new subject. New sub yeah. new subject. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, Ethan. It's, it's Jiggling, the wrestle fan. Oh, no, please God. stop. It's oh, no. doing tricks. I can make my ass do tricks. Sorry, sorry, do we usually do a thing? Do we do a thing? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm gonna be at New York Comic Con this weekend. If anyone sees me, you have my permission to chop me. So you have to address me as Mad Mike. What did you learn from wrestling this week? I <laughs> so, we I broke sword, sword everybody. Bye. What did I learn from wrestling this week? Yeah. Uh, Bray Wyatt did the uh, motion capture for the video game Soul Calibur for the character Voldo. <laughs> what? Yes. 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 Then he got all fat. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, that's what I learned. LB? Voldo followed the buzzards. LV? Um, I learned that uh, there's some good stuff in Raw right now. Um, there's, you know, you get to see him punk stuff, and they're still cutting great promos. And, and you've got uh, Daniel Bryan, who's really doing some great stuff. But still, nothing makes me as a midget in a bull costume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's pro wrestling. <laughs> Riz, what'd you learn? No, no, put it away. <laughs> put it away. <laughs> the best is we just have the audio for that. That's amazing. 
<laughs> Riz is muted. Riz is, is muted. He muted? Why is he I did muted? not show my peen, everybody. <laughs> just just letting you know that. Uh, but uh, to go back to El Torito for a minute, I learned that when I come home from work, the first thing I don't want to see is a midget in tights with a gigantic bulge in his pants. I saw that tweet. That was stuff. That, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. All right. And it, it was like right here, Sork. No, no, no. Right there. No, no. Torito is no. tripod. I can't look. I can't look. Oh, no. Hey. Oh. Uh, WrestleFan, what'd you learn? Like, nice, nice product placement there, Sorg. Uh, nice. I learned, I learned from wrestling this week that Sarah Del Rey is not a miracle worker. Because <laughs> <Eva> Marie... <laughs> oh my god, that was so bad. That look as bad for you guys as it did for me. Because oh god, and why did she put? Sorg. Why did she put the fabulous Mula's uh, singlet on backwards? Sort. They didn't even know because what she's a horrible to wrestler. On. To the point where the other one didn't JoJo? know that when you're yeah the other one uh, didn't the one know that's that, like fourteen didn't know that when you're in a tag match you don't stand next to your tag partner on the apron. But they're best fuff 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 ones. <laughs> even though they were fighting at the end of the last season of Total Divas. I yeah, learned from wrestling this week that wrestling's not for everyone. How about that? <laughs> I, I will appreciate in that match, though, they actually had two tag ropes on each side that were completely ignored by everyone. <laughs> <laughs> they had two tag ropes in each corner, almost as if to say, hey, idiots, you stand here, you hold these ropes. No <laughs> one got the memo. Mm, Mike, what'd uh, you learn? I learned that talking about fucking tag groups. Um, I learned that uh, Big Show should do a new rendition of Mama Said Knock You Out. Because he's technically unemployed now. So. That's true. He needs to do something. And instead of telling you guys what I learned, I'm going to leave you with a quote from one uh, 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 DJ Lunchbox. Uh, sneaky, sneaky, sneak. Have you seen my lunch by chance? Stop it. That tickles. I think that sums up the show this you week, know, guys. You know what tickles? I you know no, 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 Put it away, put it away, put it away. I'm not putting away, Sorg, until you finish. Oh, put it away. No, that's not right at all. Ah, guys, thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody, except for Riz and his in his shot. Is that a hole? Did you put a hole in your rest? That's not right at all. That's not a hole. Thank you, everybody that joined us. Thank you, our chat room. Thank you, the emails, the good times, the wrestling mayhem. Show.com. Mayhem Show. Wow. There is no pull in my wrestle button. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Explosion!